Well, hello guys, welcome back to the channel and welcome back to the build of the F-18. We are getting really close to being done this aircraft. We are now starting to move into the organization, the plumbing, the wiring, all that kind of stuff. So things are getting pretty serious here. So stay tuned and we'll dive in to getting close to wrapping this aircraft up. All right guys, so we are moving into the forward part of this fuselage. One of the things I've done and not shown is I made another gear plate here. Uh, gear plate being like for gear, for stuff going on top of it. And this is going on top of the front landing gear. So we've, uh, we've opened up as much space as we possibly can to, uh, to mount things to, which is Good and important because you need lots of space to, uh, to mount stuff in this F-18 because there's lots of stuff. Anyways, next thing we need to work on is the uh, actuating canopy here. So the canopy itself has a, a locking system where the back end lifts up and then the canopy opens up. So there's basically two parts to this canopy working. Let's take a look at it. All right, so in the last video, we put the Accutronics actuator in, and this is the canopy lock portion here. So it comes stock on an air cylinder, and basically what happens is this air cylinder pops the back of the canopy up, and then the canopy lifts. And when it pops the back of the canopy up, those little tabs at the front of the canopy disengage from the fuselage, and that is what allows the canopy to open. So what we wanna do, or what we need to do, is get rid of this air cylinder, and we need to replace it with a servo. So we've ordered a mini servo with the servo order, so this is a JR3411. Uh, nice, nice servo, it'll be plenty strong for this, uh, this application. So what we need to do is basically get rid of this air cylinder. We may use some of the hardware off of it and stuff, but, uh, Basically, we're getting rid of that air cylinder and we need to mount the servo in this location. Now, the servo needs to mount sideways because it can't protrude from the underside of this piece. Okay, so we need to get this done uh, and get the, sen the servo basically ready to go before we install this piece. Now, this piece is a bit of a pain to install and you want to uh, install this thing and before you start putting a lot of stuff in the front of the plane because you need to get all the way in there and do up these Allen keys. And uh, it's a real, a real bear actually. So, and then the, uh, this pin is what goes through the actual canopy and holds everything together. And there's a little access hole right there to, uh, to slide that pin in. So anyways, that's the next thing we're working on. We're basically gonna take this cylinder off, probably grind these, uh, these tabs off, and we just need to come up with a mounting solution for the servo. And I just gotta share with you guys as I'm taking this bolt off that holds the air cylinder on because it's quite humorous. Uh, they actually took the time to Loctite that bolt, but not a single bolt on the landing gear on the aircraft. What are you gonna do? What I did here was make two plates for the servo mounting and these are gonna get glued to the canopy or this, uh, this piece of the canopy itself. So all we're gonna do now is right now this back end is sticking up too far. So I'm just gonna take my sander and slowly sand these pieces out. So when this is sitting in there, it's sitting nice and flush and lower than this plane of this piece. We've got to get everything sitting below that point. All right, so we've got our mount figured out. Uh, we've taped off the bottom of the servo, so when we glue this in, it doesn't glue the servo in place. And we also, you gotta make sure you sand the paint off because you want your epoxy, high saw, whatever you're using, to adhere to the fiberglass, not the paint, right? So anyways, that is kind of what we're doing there. So we need to get kind of the straightest angle possible 
to the mounting point. Now we're going to use a clevis on the servo side and we're going to use a ball joint on this side. The ball joint needs to mount on that side of the, uh, the actuating arm. So anyways, I'm going to get this glued up and then we get to play the waiting game. All right, so we've got the plate placed in position. Now what I'll do is I'm just gonna drill my holes on the tray and get that all finalized as far as position goes. Uh, pretty straightforward, I'm just gonna tuck it forward against the former here, and uh, that's what we're gonna use to align it, get it centered side to side, drill one hole, screw it in, then do the other ones. Once that's done, then we can focus on equipment position. All right guys, so while we're waiting for the glue to dry on the canopy hatch thing, uh, we got the power box royal mounted to the plate. Now when I mounted this, I made sure that I sanded down the fasteners coming through the plate because this is going right over top of the smoke tank. So we don't want to punch any holes in that. That's an important step. Uh, you can see the color difference there. That's because I put some CA on the screws and uh, that's it. So power box is basically, or this tray is ready to go in and uh, we need this in to be able to plug the servo and the linear actuator in to work on the sequencing of this whole thing. So, so we're gonna put the tray back in and then we can start to play with the sequencer for the canopy. All right, so as I've mentioned, we're using the gear sequencer on the power box to sequence the door setup here. So I'll show you guys um, how this is gonna work. We haven't adjusted it yet because it's not installed, but uh, it's pretty straightforward. So the sequencer has a setup assistant, which makes this really simple. Uh, you basically go in there, you tell it what you, you operate your gear channel, you just go through the functions. So essentially right now this is closed and we're not timed properly, but I'll show you this. So I'm switching the canopy switch now. So the back opens and our, our Accutronics linear actuator opens the canopy. Now, if we flick the canopy switch, the Accutronics closes and the lock's gonna close. There we go. So we can time all that so it, uh, it's a lot smoother, like the canopy's gonna close and then the lock's gonna close, right? The lock's gonna come up and then the canopy's gonna open. But I just wanted to show you guys the, the process here of how that's happening. So what we can do now is we can actually hook the Accutronics uh, linear actuator up to the arm here and uh, we'll have to get a, an arm made up for this setup as well too. So I'm just gonna get those arms made up and uh, I'll show you guys what we're dealing with here at the end. All right guys, well, it is servo connector time. So basically, strip, strip, crimp, crimp, push, 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 over and over and over again. So we've got a whole bunch of servos to do. Need to get all those lines done so we can start to organize things. Uh, we've got all of our trays screwed in there. Uh, right now, it looks like lots of room but that room disappears very, very quickly. So as we've, uh, I've kind of figured out here, uh, just kind of a rough layout, I'm gonna put, I think the light controller uh, on this tray where the, where the uh, Royals mounted, the Powerbox Royal. I'm gonna put the smoke pump on that tray as well too. And then we're gonna put a UAT here, a UAT on that side, and we're gonna have both of the fuel pumps mounted right there. So actually, I think this is probably gonna be the cleanest um, F18 that I've put together so far. And uh, yeah, I, I'm, so far I'm, I'm really happy with the way things are working out. All of our air stuff, including our sequencer, our Zykoi sequencer is going on the front tray. So we're gonna keep all that towards the back of the tray. So we have room for batteries uh, here in the fuselage and also on the nose cone. I just don't wanna have all the batteries on the nose cone. I wanna have some of them mounted on that tray just to distribute some of the weight. So anyways, that's the plan. Let's, uh, let's strip some wires. Okay, so we have all of the airlines run forward 
from joining the fuselage together. So the only kicker with these airlines is you have to tee in the stuff that's in the front here. So we've got the front gear teed in right there. So for these particular, this section here, we've gone with Robart tees, which are brass uh, uh, tees. And then we've got the doors teed in right behind that former right there. So nice, clean, organized airline. Now what I've done here, what I'm gonna do is all those airlines are gonna come to the bottom or underside of this whole front area. That's why we've got a bunch of excess there. And uh, then they'll come up and then be run through all the different, uh, all, to run to all the different uh, items. Okay, so we've got a couple things that we need to run back here now. Uh, the first thing we need to do, or one of the things we need to do is the switch for the lighting system. So that needs to get installed. Uh, this setup's pretty straightforward. I just label these things when I, uh, when I get them just so it keeps it simple for me. Uh, the brass one is your negative and because this is a lit up switch, the, uh, the middle one or the middle silver one is your positive coming in. And then this one is the positive going out to the powered item. So anyways, that is the, uh, the switch we're gonna use for the lighting system. We need to have an air fill valve in this area. Maybe this will be my tip time for this video, uh, but I really don't suggest using the air fill valves that come with these SkyMaster kits. They've got like a little flapper in them, call it a little thin plastic rubber flapper, and they are terrible. Sometimes they seal, sometimes they don't, sometimes the brand new ones don't work. So, um, sorry SkyMaster, but those air fill valves you guys include are garbage. I never install them. So we'll put a Robart one in here. And uh, again, that air fill valve is gonna be used for beginning of the day, topping up your air, and uh, then the compressor is gonna take care of the rest of the day, okay? So that's what we're gonna be installing in that center section. All right, so got the air valve installed, and we've got our air line that's gonna run forward. Uh, just run to this area right here right now. So that's done. Uh, the nice thing about this plate, the way I made it, is it's fairly easy to get up. Uh, you undo the four screws and then it, uh, it just lifts up. So you've got good access underneath, which is nice. And uh, you don't really have to unplug anything. So uh, next thing I'm doing is we're gonna get the switch uh, dealt with. So what I'm doing here is I'm just getting my wire uh, figured out. So we need, essentially we need to have a positive that goes all the way from the switch to the nose. So that's what the long six foot uh, red lead is for there. And then we've got two uh, three foot leads and those leads are basically going from the negative and our positive and they're gonna go to the light controller which is gonna be right in this area. And then we'll also have a negative that goes from this area forward to the battery. So anyways, uh, it, it's, maybe it sounds complicated, it's quite simple. So what we need to do next is basically get a hole cut out for the light switch. And this is kind of a nice fit. It's basically a friction fit. So when you install these switches, uh, these little tabs compress down. So essentially you make a, a hole just a little bit smaller than the, uh, than the top flange there. And I just use a Dremel for that and it works out good. So we'll get that hole cut and then we'll have to feed our wires forward and then we'll have to solder the wires to the, uh, to the switch. All right guys, so we've got the switch all wired up there just like I talked about before. And now we're ready to install the switch in the fuselage and run these wires forward. All right guys, jumping around a little bit here. Uh, sorry for that, but uh, I'm just uh, also working on the front nose servo and I forgot to put a flat spot when I had the gear out on the arm here. So all I did was heat the uh, this little arm up. This is the servo arm or the arm that the servo attaches to and you need to put a flat spot on the shaft right there. So it's fairly straightforward. You do have to heat this up because that's the one thing Skymaster Loctited. And uh, you can see the mark right there 
where the uh, the bolt was fastened down so that gives us the uh, the location so we're just going to take dremel and uh, put a little flat spot on there and get this thing all uh, all loctited back in place and uh, also working on the nose uh, nose steering all right guys so we've got the linkage all hooked up for the nose steering and you can see it there you have to use like a z pattern to make sure you uh, you have enough room for everything so that is all done. We've got a golden clevis on one side and a ball joint on the other side. So that is all set up. Just got to do the, uh, the fastening bolts up for the servo arm itself. And again, like always, don't forget your Loctite. All right, so now that we've got the nose servo set up, next thing we need to do is cut a little slot in that front tray. So that's why I haven't mounted anything to that tray yet because I knew we would have to uh, cut a little bit of it out for the servo. So it doesn't have to be much, just enough for that servo to come back in like that. So what I need to do is just uh, draw that out on the plate and uh, then we'll take that tray out and we will cut the, uh, the section out and then we'll be ready to start working on our install of all the equipment going in this area. All right, guys, I'm just trying to show you all these little details just because uh, I sometimes don't show them. So I added a gauge to the air system and you can see that I added a little T in there uh, placed up and down, I guess, if you want to call it that way. So we've got uh, everything plumbed in line there. Uh, we also added the switch. So that's been installed. These wires here are just waiting to run forward. And then we also have the tray installed. Now that the tray is good and our cutout's good, I drilled the holes back there so we can get that tray fastened in for the last time. All right, so the last, one of the last things I think that we need to, oh, well, we need to run our fill lines over here too. But one of the last things that we need to run uh, to this location is the fuel pump lines. Now the standard fuel pump line for the Sui wind turbines uh, is not long enough. It gets us to about here, I think. And so we need to make an extension cable. Uh, so I'm gonna make those extension cables up and then we can work on getting the fuel pumps positioned, the UATs positioned. So let's make up our extension cables. All right, so we've got our extension cables uh, run underneath everything. We've got our UAT mounts installed. Uh, next thing we need to focus on is getting stuff like the compressor installed in this area right there, which means we got to kind of figure out the battery connections as well too. Uh, the thing I, I want to avoid here is start putting a bunch of stuff in and then not having access to, uh, to the area to get stuff installed. So uh, next thing is probably the compressor. Okay guys, so we're getting ready to put the compressor in here. We're still missing one piece, but this will give you an idea of what we're doing with this, uh, this compressor. So obviously we've got the compressor unit. Then we've got a four millimeter piece of brass tube. So that's gonna plug into the line here. Uh, I took a, it's about half the full length of the tube. We've got a four mil to four mil Festo connector. That's gonna plug on to the tube. And then we've got some high temperature Teflon tubing right there. And then after that, we're gonna have a water separator or water catch. And then we're gonna go to the air system. So that's what we're using. We do need a reducer as well to go down to three millimeter, but this is our setup. All right, so we've got everything done up for our leads here. So the smoke pump comes all pre-set up and everything from the uh, little speed controller but uh, the V-Speed compressor, we needed to add a lead and a XT60 end on there, so that's been done. And then we also have our power wire set up as well too. So this one lead comes from the battery, which is gonna be probably in the nose. And then we've got two plugins for each of those devices over there. So that is all wired up and ready to go. So what that means is we can now get this pump mounted in the airframe. And uh, we're gonna do that as I talked about previously, using a little bit of goop on the base and just uh, setting it in place. All right, so we've got all of our pumps mounted. We've got the smoke pump mounted right on the same tray as the power box. And then we've got our fuel system all right here. Now, the reason I want the pumps mounted here is we do a nice little loop right to the UATs for the inlet, so that is, uh, a real simple way to do that. 
and we'll have uh, nice unrestricted uh, lines going right to the pumps. So that's all good. Next thing I think I'm gonna focus on here is the light setup, which we've got a fair bit of room right in this area to deal with. So we'll, uh, we'll start to work on the SkyMaster light setup going in this area. All right, so a little bit more progress here. We've got both UATs mounted and the line from the tanks has been run to the proper pickup location on the UATs. And we're actually, we were fortunate that in our last batch that I ordered, uh, we had two of these UATs with the little ends flipped around. So that worked out perfect. So the intake on this one's on the left side, intake on that one's on the right side. The, uh, the fill lines are gonna come to a T and that's gonna go back. So when you're filling the fuel, both of these are gonna fill up at the same time. And we've also got the lighting system mounted down there. Just use, use double-sided tape. The power line for the lighting system has been run and uh, that's run forward. So that is ready to start receiving things to be plugged into. So these map tanks, the nice thing about these things is they're nice and simple, they're affordable, uh, they work, they work great. They've got a nice massive pleated filter. Now these map tanks include this reducer. So this is for the high flow ones. So what you're gonna do is you have an eight millimeter Festo tube that goes on the pickup line right here and it's gonna loop around. And then we need to go down to the six mil Festo side or the six mil fitting on the pump. And that's what that reducer is for. So you go from eight mil to six mil and we've got a short little section of six mil which plugs into the pump. So we've got both of those made up and they're exactly the same size. So those are ready to be installed. I'm not gonna put those in, I don't think, until I get some of the other wiring completed. All right guys, I'm just working on this, uh, this light system set up here. So I've got my cables run from the power box down the side there. You can see the uh, wire holders. Those are available on my website and uh, they go into the controller right there. So what we're doing is just figuring out the other side. So the one servo connection that's plugged in right there, that's my afterburner light. So that goes to the back of the plane. I've already checked that and that works. I'll throw a little clip in here. Uh, it's not really a great clip because it doesn't pick up the flashes. But I'm gonna show you um, a little something here on this SkyMaster light controller because none of these things are labeled. I think I talked about this in the beginning of this uh, build video, but uh, basically these are the little uh, y boxes, if you want to call them that, that come with the SkyMaster light setup. So your input is on this side and you can see that I have marked the plus is on the side facing me, the negatives in the middle, that would be the nothing or the signal. So essentially just worry about those two pins plus negative and then on this side where your lights actually connect. So your connectors go up and down on this side. So that is a positive on the top, negative on the bottom. And there it is with the connectors all plugged in. So we've got positive on top, negative on bottom. And this one, the connectors go sideways, positive on the outside, negative on the middle. So hopefully if you're using a SkyMaster light controller, that helps you out because these things are a bit of a pain. So what this is, is it's just a splitter. So we've got too many cables right now to fit in the light connector. So that's what this is, is just a multi hookup box. All right, and while we were working on the front end of this plane, just wanna give a shout out to all of you guys that have donated, guys and girls, that have donated to the Shop Build Fund. Thank you so much for the donations. Truly appreciate it. It's amazing to see the support and the kindness that's coming through the viewers. Uh, absolutely love it and blown away. So thank you for the donations. All your names are listed here and uh, thank you. All right, so we've got all of our light expanders, I guess if you wanna call them that in place. Now I've uh, glued those down with uh, double-sided tape and then also put some uh, shoe goop on them as well too just to keep them in the right spot. So those are curing. You can see we've got them listed as nose, flash, and solid. So it'll be pretty easy to flip them around if we need to. And uh, anyways, so that's, uh, that's all set up. Other thing I did was power up the compressor, put a little uh, 
closed off piece of four mil line in the end here of the water separator. And this has been sitting for eight hours. And because this is pushed out like that, it looks like it still has pressure, but let's unclip this and check. Yeah. So it uh, held air for eight hours in just the compressor setup, which is promising because I was worried that the air would leak out of the compressor. So that's really cool. Um, anyways, little, little side note for you. So we're almost done wrapping up the wiring section, which will be the end of this video, but uh, we're gonna get our lights all figured out and get some of the wiring figured out. And then in the next video, we'll be moving on to the air setup. All right, guys, so we've kind of got everything wrapped up in this back section, except a couple things. So we've got all of our lights hooked up now, and that step is done. We put the, uh, the lines going from the UATs to the fuel pump input, so that's done. We also put the lines, the fill lines for the fuel system, so those two go together to a T, and then those lines go back to this area here. So we've got our fuel on this side, we've got the smoke on that side. So this main plate is effectively done. We've got everything on this plate that needs to go now. So there's a lot packed in there, but again, we only gotta take this one hatch off here to run the plane and then Hopefully we're just gonna have to take the nose cone off to access all the batteries. We don't wanna have to take the cockpit out unless we need to get to the stuff. So the problem, one of the problems with these F-18s is you run out of room real quick. So trying my best to keep this as organized as possible, but uh, the wire mess really does kind of bother me, but I mean, I'm, I'm trying to make it serviceable, but still uh, decent and organized, so. We do still have a few things to deal with. So we've got our satellites to deal with that. I'm gonna do that at the end. We've got our turbine battery leads here. So we need to make an extension for these leads and run them forward to the, uh, the nose section. We need to make our leads that plug into the power box, run those forward to the nose section. So we still got uh, a whole bunch of wire to run. Speaking of wire, uh, don't underestimate the amount of wire you use in an aircraft like this. Uh, I think the spool of wire that we purchased was a, uh, a 50 meter power box uh, spool and uh, we've used all of it. I'm, I'm into more uh, wire than that. So 50 meters is like 150-ish feet, a little bit more than that. We've used all of that in this aircraft. So tons of wire, uh, power wire as well too. Uh, I've got uh, 50 foot spools and we're gonna be probably really close to using about half the spool on this aircraft. So it just adds up quick, right? So there's just a, a ton of wire, ton of airlines, it's pretty nuts. So I think that is gonna be everything for this video. Kind of a weird video. All we did was focus on the front end and the organizing. Next video is gonna be just about the air system. So that's all we're gonna deal with, hopefully in the next video. We may, uh, I may show you guys the power leads and stuff, but I'll probably just leave that stuff out. It's pretty basic things. But uh, yeah, so next video, we're gonna focus just on the air system, the front plate, getting that all installed, getting it all programmed with the Zykoi sequencer, and uh, that will make this plane very close to being complete. So that's everything, guys. Thank you so much for watching the videos. Don't forget to give the video a thumbs up if you haven't done so already. Hit that subscribe button, and uh, if you have any questions, post them down below. Uh, lots going on in this video, so please, uh, questions, 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 post them if you have any suggestions, any questions, anything like that, feel free to list them down below. Uh, I love seeing all those questions. So thanks guys for watching and we will see you in the next video.